Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. For a donation that directly supports the channel, I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info, it's in the video description below. If you want to talk about anything else, hit the comments. I love this game, I could talk about it all day, I'll respond to anything constructive. Don't be shy, now let's go play some Magic. We have a spicy one today, folks. This is a donation deck list from Mitchell. This is Modern Mono Black Infect. Mitchell said he's been really into Mono Black Infect ever since it was standard legal, and he's just trying to make it work. So I'm looking at this list uh, really for the first time right now, uh, really picking things apart. Um, things that pop out right away is that this ensnaring bridge plan in a deck with uh, that presumably wants to attack with creatures, it can't. I suspect that might be a little awkward. Like, Scytheris, the Blight Dragon, in the same deck as Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, I, I'm a little concerned about that. However, uh, there are proliferate options. Contagion Clasp and Karn's Bastion can kill an opponent without ever attacking again. So, this is less of like a uh, traditional blue green infect deck that wants to deal 10 poison in combat with pump spells and stuff. This looks like sort of a. Uh, pox or mono black uh prison kind of deck that wants to lock the opponent out with uh liliana like get them hellbent get them stuck under an ensnaring bridge and only do one point of infect damage somewhere along the way so and then you proliferate them out once everything's under control which is a pretty cool way to approach the deck. Um, there, there's plenty of modern power level stuff going on in this deck. Like uh, Liliana was a, a modern all-star for a long time. She's sort of fallen off as Jun fell off. Uh, Thoughtseize, obviously a great modern card. Fatal Push is everywhere. It, it's just how we're planning to win the game. Um, that, that seems like it might be a little disjointed. Um, I think that hiding behind an ensnaring bridge is fine. But I'm worried about Phyrexian Vatmother. This is a hyper-aggressive poison creature that can actually genuinely kill you if you're stuck under your own ensnaring bridge. And you can target yourself with Liliana's Minus to get rid of a Vatmother. It, it, that's just... I, I can see that being a problem if you draw them in the wrong order. Uh, I'm also not super sold on Mouth of Ronom. Uh, this is a 5-mana uh, Sacrifice Mouth of Ronom. It deals four damage to target creature. Like we're a black deck. We have Blood Chief's Thirst, Fatal Push, Collective Brutality, Liliana's going nuts, uh, Hero's Downfall, Dead of Winter. I don't know that we need a colorless land to remove creatures in this deck that's already really good at removing creatures. So I'm going to change that to another Snow Swamp right away. I guess without Mouth of Ronom, it doesn't... Oh, wait, we still have Dead of Winter. I was going to say it doesn't need to be a Snow Swamp anymore, but we still have Dead of Winter. All right, I can make my Ink Moth Nexus art match, too. But I loaded that one up weird, but okay. So now our Ink Moth Nexus... Nexi? Nexuses? Nexies match. I'm a little skeptical of the ensnaring bridge in the main deck, like I talked about. It's just, uh, I can see where it would be good, and I guess I could just not cast Vat Mother if it's bad. So I'm going to leave the main deck as is, other than that. Uh, I'm not sure why we need three Relic of Progenitus in the main. Like, is Uro that devastating to this plan? I guess it probably is. Uro's pretty devastating in general. Uh, but the, the big decks in modern right now, uh, I, Prowess, like Luris-based aggro decks. Uh, I played a modern league last week where I lost to uh, Zoo, Prowess, and I think Actual Burn uh, were like three of the things I played against. So there's a lot of really fast decks where Collective Brutality is good. I'm actually going to bring a third Collective Brutality into the main and bring one of these Relics into the sideboard. I, I just, I'm not convinced that we need three in the main deck in current Modern. And 
Ghost Quarter is kind of a bummer in the sideboard. Like, is this the best way to remove a land? So I'd rather have Field of Ruin if we're worried about uh, Field of the Dead, but Field of Ruin might be too slow against Tron. But if we have Thoughtseize, that can at least clip a payoff against Tron. That might save some time. Uh, I think that Field of Ruin is going to be a better card in general here. Like We have a ton of basic lands to support it. And this isn't a deck that can really afford to spew a land drop either. So I'm going to stick with that. Uh, wrench Mind in the sideboard if we need to just lean heavy into shredding their hand. Feed the Swarm is a, a cool new removal spell from Zendikar Rising. Uh, it can destroy an enchantment, which is not something Black's been able to do in the past. So those are my initial impressions. Let's see how this plays out in practice. All right, I'm on the play in round one. Uh, this is an unfortunate one-lander. I can Inquisition them twice, which might collapse some draws out of some decks, but if I miss a land drop, like this hand really starts to perform at three mana. So I'm not even close. All right, this is a good one. I'll keep this. Um, I'm going to send Hero's Downfall away. I bought him the Hero's Downfall because I want the three lands to hit Liliana on time. Cryptic Command Path to Exile and some other shit. All right, it looks like we're playing against Blue-White Control where Liliana is quite good. So this is a deck where uh, settling in for a long haul, uh, like hiding behind Ensnaring Bridge and stuff, is probably bad. Right, I'm going to fetch. Uh, these fetch lands basically only exist to thin the deck. Like it, It's a mono-black deck. I'll draw my cards now. Ooh, now I can set up a turn for Liliana with Thoughtseize protection. But then that might be too late. I guess they've had two draw steps to find something. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play here on turn four. Oh, cool. Now I can just do everything. I can discard them now and then discard them again next turn. All right, so I know about three lands and Path to Exile in that hand. Oh, baby. That Path to Exile might actually end up with a target. Though, I might be able to convince them to discard it to Liliana if they even drew another spell here. All right, they found another Cryptic. I'll take that. So their hand is Path and Lands. I'll discard my Swamp. It's kind of awkward there that uh, like th this tension is rough. Like if I draw a land, do I play it and just discard Scytherix? Or do I discard the land? I think I'm going to discard the land. Like if I can get their hand to actual empty, like, okay, yeah, now they dump the path to exile. I thought I might be able to convince them to do that. I guess I could have played land Scytherix and plus, but then they path. Ooh, all right, so they can get back cryptic now which can bounce Liliana in response to her own ability. So I have to make sure I leave something behind. Oh, big to fairy. Shit. All right. Uh, that was a really good draw. Uh, that is the card. 
All right, well, Scytherix is gone, but so is their Cryptic Command. But now they're drawing two cards a turn against a Liliana. So th this is bad. Uh, we, we needed to for them to not stick a Planeswalker. All right, a bunch of lands. If I can get Liliana up to an ultimate level, uh, I will probably make them choose between Teferi and all of their lands. This Teferi is actually that good. All right, well, Liliana's not going to ultimate now. They have Celestial Colonnade. Yeah, so I was not able to produce any meaningful pressure this game. Like, I got their hand down to nothing, but it didn't matter. I think almost anything other than this Teferi would have been fine. Yeah, you better attack Liliana. She's coming for you. So I'm going to lose Liliana to Celestial Colonnade this turn. And then I'm just sitting on nothing against the Teferi. I'm not sure why they're moving into combat, then activating Celestial Colonnade. Like, I think it's... I, I mean, it doesn't matter, but I, I think, like, technically speaking, it's better to do it main phase. Alright. They don't have any poison for me to proliferate. I, they didn't see a single poison card. So, in this matchup, uh, Vat Mother is definitely in. I do want to wrench their mind quite a bit. Um, I might need the third relic just because I'm cutting a lot of stuff. This is not an ensnaring bridge matchup. Uh, not a dead of winter. Uh, Fatal push has some utility uh, against Celestial Colonnade, but I don't think I actually want it in the deck. We also saw Snapcaster Mage. Uh, but Contagion... Contagion Clasp can deal with that. Um, Ashiok shuts down fetch lands, but that's about all it does. All right, I think I do want this relic in. I I don't think I want Field of Ruin. Like they have the Colonnade, but that they're not really doing anything like crazy with their lands. Though, just bringing in an extra land to keep hitting land drops is cool. Hero's Downfall and Blood Chief's Thirst can both kill creatures, or can both kill Planeswalkers. Yeah, uh, those are my outs to a Resolve to Fairy. Yeah, I think this is going to be the plan. Okay, uh, I will keep this. This hand puts a quick poison on the opponent, which the previous hand was not able to do. I'm going to hit for one poison this turn, just at least get that started. All right, Proliferate Engine is online. Now if they want to just sit around forever and do nothing and loop Crypto Commands, they can die to a Karn's Bastion. OK, 
can also wrench their mine this turn. And still play Relic. All right. Maybe I should lead on Relic because I care about it less. I mean, Wrench still got a uh, a card out of their hand. It's a one for one instead of a two for one. I think I Knight's Whisper here. I want to find a discard spell to check if my Vat Mother can get in. All right, I found a second one of these, so it, it's fine getting in with this. And if they want to Path to Exile this thing, that's not even the worst. But creature lands historically are pretty strong against control decks. All right, they shocked, so they have something. Target player draws two cards. Gain control of, all right, non-land permanent, good. <laughs> if that said gain control of target creature, they could have stalled my creature, but it is non-land. Oh, did somebody missed a land drop. Containment priest. All right. Um, we're going to start with a thought seize. Let's see what we're working with. See if we can sneak this vat mother in. Oh, baby. <laughs> uh, nope, we cannot. Um, I probably just want to take Snapcaster Mage. And start beating down with my Ink Moth next eye. See that hand? That's well, we knew it was going to be seven spells because they didn't play a land. The Relic is actually pressuring Logic Knot in a way that is meaningful. All right, still trudging for that land drop. Oh no. Field of Ruin is among the best lands they could find. Um, I think this is worth a card at this point. All right, Queen Lilian is here. I'm going to activate both of my Ink Moths. They'll field one of them, and then I can second main Liliana. So I could second main Liliana or Crusader, but they we know they have a clean answer to Crusader over there. So I'll make them respect Liliana, at least deal with it, get the extra card here. And I think I want to discard Field of Ruin. Now I think Karn's Bastion is the best draw in the deck. They did not purge Liliana. So they must have some other plan. I'm going to discard Crusader.
If they didn't remove Liliana, they didn't cast Mentor. If I play a spell, then they don't get to end step purge Liliana, but they do get to counter my creature. Uh, I'm going to at least try to deny them the ability to Archmage Charm in the end step. Like, I'm going to force some sort of activity now. Like, if I just pass to play around their counter spells, then they get to draw two cards for free. Alright. Uh, mother is countered. Logic Knot's clear. All right, that lined up really well. If I, okay, no, it didn't matter. I was going to say if I played Crusader, then they can't do that, but then they just delve one more, so they can still do that. Show me your mind. They're just over here leaving up mana. I'll I'll mess with it. Counter draw. All right. I would have bounced Ink Moth Nexus myself. Oh, I should have played Florexian Crusader here. I just fucked up. That thing has protection from white. Whoops. Yeah, that card should definitely be in play. All right, that's good, though. They keep missing land drops. I can keep pressuring. Oh, we found the wind con. All right, yeah, they're dead very quickly here. I'm not even going to cast my Crusader. Uh, all right. Just a little too late for that one. Because if they have Field of Ruin right now, that could be bad. Cryptic. So they can bounce Bastion, but that doesn't even matter. So I basically have two lands here that How can I tell if they're selected or not? All right, I think. I think they're selected. All right, yes. Green is on, blue is off. So they have basically have two lands they have to deal with, each of which can uh, deal one poison. One, two, three. All right, so I have five, six, seven. That's not enough uh, to cast Crusader and still activate Bastion. So they're dead on board to two different lands here. Like either one of these surviving this turn is fine. We know they have one Cryptic. All right, so they can destroy one of them, Cryptic the other. So they're actually stable here. Our Field of Ruin was a great find. Oh, it would be such a bummer if we get them to 9 poison and then lose. But Cryptic Command only bounces my Nexus, so I can... And it taps them out. So I can attack, they bounce it, and then I play Crusader and just replay Nexus. That's not even bad. And they can't just take the hit either. Boing. All right, so you're back. You're in. Protection from white is going to be huge. I'll play this too. 
Okay. Force of negation that. So what does that mean? What are they trying to set up? All right, my field is so ruined. Good thing I put in another swamp. It seems like we're going to need all of them. All right, pro white. And they only have blue mana available, which I guess is fine because that's all of the, the mana they can use. I think this pro white's going to get there, though. Like, what could even be in their hand? All right, thought so. Okay, uh, I I either forgot and or undervalued protection from white in this matchup early on, or I would have been pushing these Crusaders a little harder. So that worked really well. The We saw everything come together there. The, the discard picked things apart. Uh, the creature lands got in. The proliferate engine went in there. Phyrexian Vat Mother demanded an answer. So that, that was good. Um, I think this is target player lose target opponent loses to life. Yeah, so this can't like deal two to a planeswalker, or else I might be interested in it. It's an ability your opponent control can't cause its con their control to search the library. So Ashiok, not only so Ashiok can control their graveyard for Logic Knot and Mystic Sanctuary. It can also stop them from fetching. And if they want to use their Field of Ruins, which seemed to be a big part of their plan, they are going to lose... Uh, it's going to cost them three mana, and they're going to be down a land to do it. Like, they don't get to search. So I, I might want Ashiok here in some number. As exciting as Scytherix the Blight Dragon is, I don't think this is the matchup for him. Like they just have so many counter spells, removal spells. Like, sorry, big man. Uh, I, I hope that we kill someone with Skitherix in this league, but it's not going to be this one. Uh, if I'm bringing in Ashiok, do I still need Relic? I I brought in Relic just because I needed something else to bring in. All right, I'll call that Ashiok this time. Celestial Purge is a hell of a card, though. Uh, that, that's mostly in those control decks to play against uh, Prowess and the, the Burn decks, but it's very good here, too. So I have a choice here. I can play Ink Moth Nexus and try to get some points in, or I can play Swamp and try to curve up Wrench Mine into Crusader into Vat Mother. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm also not totally sold on fetch lands in this list. Like, it's a mono black deck. You're not fetching for any re reason other than some like mild deck thinning and like mill is a deck in this format uh so fetching can turn on archive trap ashiok is a played card in this format uh milling can or fetching can uh, exposes you to ashiok yeah so i'm suspicious of the fetch lands Kind of hope they tap out for Teferi here. Oh wow, they missed a land drop again. All right, I'm gonna spend my mana and make them do the same. Oh, it just stuck. Wow. That they're in kind of a tough spot now, fetching down a creature land and a pro white creature. I found a land. Okay, um, I am much more interested in that than one extra poison. Let's just start beating up their hand. 
If I can maneuver into a place where this Vat Mother is going to stick, that's worth doing. And now they have poison, the proliferate engine is on. Proliferate can also add counters to my Lilianas if I ever get multiple things happening at the same time. The main phase Archmage charm to draw a card, or draw two cards. Necessary evil. Oh, damn. They have to have a creature to target. That sucks. All right, well, I'll just discard that. Maybe I shouldn't have discarded that. I, I'm starting to have the buyer's remorse. Um, I think that... Like, I don't want to just play straight into Supreme Verdict by jamming Vat Mother here. I think the play that plays around Supreme Verdict is just holding the Contagion class. All right. Yeah, I, I think I fumbled that turn a little bit. Let's see if they can punish. I just nothing go. All right. Finding an easy discard was nice. I'll take that. So I'm not going to activate Ink Moth Nexus before I attack, because if they have Cryptic Command, I'm going to make them choose to let this attack or uh, Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, no. Oh, I have First Strike. That's not as bad as I thought. I was like, that's not a white card. And it's true. But it's also not super relevant. It'll save them two poison and let them draw a card. And I'm going to jam. Oh, they didn't. All right, so they must be scared of Liliana, which means I can jam Vat Mom and Blood Chief's Thirst. They're a Snapcaster Mage here. So now I'm Hellbent, which is where I want to be when I have Liliana. Liliana's threatening ultimate on a, in a game where they've already... Oh, wow. A game where they're already missing land drops. And they just two for one themselves. Pitching Archmage Charm. Like, going long, that's at least a three for one. Just to make sure Liliana doesn't pop off. So they bounce Fat Mom. They attack Lily. And then they die because I have three poison here. And they're at seven. Uh... I'm going to empty their hand just because I can, even though they're dead on board. Undefeated <laughs> after one round on the board, uh, won the match. Uh, I'm, I'm excited that we got at least one. And we're into the next one right away. Uh, this card, or this hand, goes discard, discard Liliana. This is a, a pretty nice uh, rack hand, or pox hand. Playing against another flooded strand. So what's this going to look like? Oh, this one is Jeskai. Cleansing Wildfire, I don't give a shit about. I'm going to take Remand. Because I don't really want them to be able to remand my Inquisition next turn, and then I don't really know what I'm going into when I jam Liliana. Cleansing Wildfire doesn't really do anything to me. 
I have a lot of basics. I guess it, it is good against uh, the the Ink Moth Nexus. Worth noting. All right, Snapcaster's out of here. I think they're supposed to just cast Snapcaster Mage in response there. Like them giving me the choice to take Snapcaster or Wildfire instead of just not having that choice is worse than like like they should force the decision. All right, many swamps. All right, so now I get to jam Liliana. Spell Pierce is not a well-known modern card these days. Liliana versus Jace isn't really a, a fight I wanted to fight, but I have the, the hero's downfall. Oh, they discarded Jace. Just chucked him. Get out of here. It's interesting that they would value the reactive crypt command over the proactive Jace the Mind Sculptor on a board where I'm ahead. So this is kind of awkward because if I cast a spell, be cast Knight's Whisper before I Liliana, then they can counterbounce and I don't get my plus. But if I don't do that, then uh, I have harder discard choices to make. But I'm just going to plus. I think that is better. And I think I can discard the land here. So at least if I cast Night's Whisper, they and they want to deal with it they can they have to counter bounce instead of uh bounce draw which is probably what they'd rather be doing all right this should mess up any uh mystic sanctuary shenanigans Is this the, the bounce draw end step? They sculpted this whole game around this cryptic command. So let's see what they do with it and how good it looks. Oh, a shark typhoon. OK. That's a good card. That can pressure Liliana in a way that is meaningful. I can ignore it for a little bit. I also have a removal spell if I really care. I just need to. Dodge Lightning Bolt for a turn. Which they probably have, or else why are you Jeskai and not Blue White? I'm just going to bust this. Just having more cards, more options, all sound good to me. Alright, I drew a redundant Urborg to discard. Love it. I'll get thirsty on this. If they fight over this, I can stick the Crusader. If they like counter bounce, I can just replay Liliana. So this this is actually lining up pretty well. All right, looks like they're doing something. Counter draw. 
deal. Protection from red and white. Those are the colors that your deck is. All will be one. And the shark is blue, but I have first strike. And Liliana is still crunching. Like if they want to attack shark plus bolt Liliana. All right, they had they found the bolt. Oh, they found two bolts. Why? They definitely should have just attacked there, I think. All right. I think that the net result of that is I have one more life than I would have otherwise, and they have one less card in hand. Like, they could have attacked Liliana and just held Lightning Bolt in their hand for later. Uh, I'm going to save the downfall to kill the Teferi. I'm not going to downfall the shark in response. Or I can also just ignore or attack Teferi. Save downfall for a Jace or big Teferi. Yeah, I'm just going to attack Teferi. Found another threat. Love it. Keep it going. These are the great sort of games where these like sticky poison threats can actually win. I can deal with this shark. At some point, I'll choose to do that. Ooh. So now if I push with these and they take action in combat, I can jam Fat Mother. And if they have a 3-3 three, three shark, I can Heroes Downfall it. Alright, path is fine. This mountain of basics is paying off big time. Alright, what is your one card left? Because I, my mother is here. And she has stern words for you. All right, we're in there. A Supreme Verdict at this point would be pretty bad news. Uh, spot removal is whatever. Um, I'm, I'm still winning the race. If they don't attack here, then they don't have anything. Like uh, absorbing four poison. Oh, the hero's downfall. They're actually just dead to six poison. Because they're at four, and you only need ten, and that's how that works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was basically the perfect draw. Because now if they counter this, I have a second removal spell. And if they have nothing, they lose. Or if they have Shark Typhoon, I can downfall that as well. All right. Your mother... All right, so th this is going to look a lot like the last game, uh, except this this build has burn in it, which I imagine means it has less overall counter spells. So wrench mines are in, ensnaring bridges are out. I do like uh, fatal push more than I did last time because of the shark typhoons. So what is the cut then? Uh, Dead of Winter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I knew there was another one sitting around here. Uh, that Mother also really good, especially if their removal is damage-based because five is a huge tuchus. I want all my discard against this deck. Blood Chief Thirst. Maybe with uh, between Hero's Downfall, Fatal Push, and Blood Chief's Thirst, I don't need all of the pushes. 
because I want the thirst because we've seen Jace out of this deck and Teferi. I I think Scytherix I should probably cut, but I am having too much fun imagining winning with that card. All right, I'm going in like this. Yeah, that that opening hand though uh, of uh, Inquisition Inquisition Liliana, that's just classic modern. That's that's Jund. That's the rack. That's legacy playable in decks like Pox. Like you see, you see that play in Eternal formats all the time, and it was really good. And just that that early disruption set up getting over the finish line at the end. I'm gonna keep this. Uh, it needs a black source, but I play a lot of them, and I'm on the draw. And I have Inquisition uh, to play even off just one black source. And having Clasp and Bastion against the control deck is pretty exciting. There's an argument to not fetch here, because that's one less black source in the deck. But I am interested in, oh, they've boarded into something else. Or maybe they had that all along. All right, so I'm going to have to be able to beat a Platinum Imperia on this game. Madcap Experiment is a reveal of cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact, put it onto the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, and then you take damage equal to the number of cards revealed. So... They play Platinum Imperion, which says your life total can't change. And uh, so they cast this, and the way the rules work is by the time the damage, like you put the creature into play off experiment before you take damage, things happen on cards in the order that they're listed in. Oh, shit. Uh, all right, we broke down the black source. So you put Platinum Imperion into play, and then your life total can't change. So basically, once they get to four mana, we could be in some trouble. It looks like we're both in this land drop void. It's too bad, because my hand is good. Though... This deck is also really good at actually beating a uh, Platinum Imperion because I have Liliana and Heroes Downfall. Like I have like actual shit that can do that. Do with a an eight eight. This combo is really sweet. Uh, th this has shown up in Modern and Legacy. Flagstones of Trocare plus cl Cleansing Wildfire. You get to just cash in this. Uh, basic, you get to play a sideboard card in your main deck. Uh, in exchange, and it becomes rampant growth if you're not actively using it to defeat your opponent. All right, so they're not even going to need to experiment. They can just beat me with this hand they have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, missing these land drops. Bad times. To the surprise of no one. Let's just keep this going. This should bait the cryptic. Because this Thoughtseize can just take the cryptic. So they might as well cast it. Like, don't give me a choice where to take Cryptic or not when you could just, like, put the Cryptic on the stack and it cantrips. Yeah, this really sucks. This We were so set up to just proliferate this deck out, and we're just not doing that instead. They should just jam Jace. Oh, they're going for the experiment. All 
All right, so I need to draw a swamp right now, and I need them to not have. All right, so please don't have force of negation. All right. We got through that part. So one, two, three, four, five of these cards are actually in their hand. The rest were revealed off their deck. Anger of the gods. All right. All right, I hit my land drop. It, they would have been way better served going for Jace there. Like they've seen removal spells out of my deck. So I just got a two for one. Off of that Liliana. Jace can bounce Phyrexian Crusader, which is a bummer because they don't have a whole lot of ways to interact with that. And that is one of them. I really need to get a poison on this opponent somehow. The discard game isn't working now because they have Jace. I know about Jace. I know about the cryptic command they're about to draw. They have Shark Typhoon. Like there, There's not a good path here to wrench their mind. All right, now they're holding up the other cryptic. Every turn they don't have Jason play is a blessing, though. So uh, I will. The only reason we're in this game at all is because they went for uh, experiment instead of Jace that one turn. I'm going to play Vat Mother as bait. Like if they want to cast the, the Cryptic on this, that's fine. But I need to get to a point where I'm double spelling. Oh, they can just get remand. Yeah, remand is pretty good against four drops, historically speaking. But uh, you got to be able to figure out when you're ahead and when it's safe to tap out. Just like leaving up instants is just not that important. Also, getting Platinum Imperion against a deck full of removal and a deck that kills with poison. It doesn't care if your life total changes. All right, just oh, I was just bolting so they before they go to hand size. All right. Um, I'll cast Crusader this time. Because now I can double spell with the Fatal Push. And now I have Blood Chief Thirst that can kill Jace. Uh, counter and Bounce Mystic Sanctuary. Okay, they have entered that phase of the game. I'm going to fatal push this when they have uh so they have as little information as possible so that, like after they make this decision uh, I'll do it in combat. So now they're they're cryptic looping. They need to find a reliable way to draw an extra card every turn, which Jace is. But they do actually have to play him. At this point, though, I think they're better served to just Shark Typhoon in the end step and then hold up Cryptic. But I, that might just be because I know it's in my hand. Oh, Teferi. That's, that's bad. Them having multiple ways to, uh, multiple ways to pressure here is bad. Though, it's not the worst because 
I just somehow have three answers to Planeswalkers of the three answers that I play. Leading on to Fairy Smart, though, because uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so with a land drop, they would have been able to play Jace plus to Fairy and still have Cryptic up. Now they have double Cryptic, though. Double, So I have to double spell to do anything. And even once I'm there, they can just like tap bounce during combat every turn. Oh, that's so close to being something I'm interested in. All right, well, I will at least pressure them. If I find another black and get to wrench them twice, I, I guess that doesn't even matter. Like, they have so much shit they can do right now. All right, they did not bounce a Mystic Sanctuary with that cryptic, which I'm a little surprised by. Another Teferi, a different Teferi. This Contagion Clasp, it is turn 13 and I cast it on turn two. If I were able to put even one poison on them at any point in this game, they would be dead to this Clasp. They'd be way behind instead of way ahead. Or do they have a Wildfire? I don't think I want to take I guess one, two, three, four, five. whatever. I'll take the damage. They might be able to burn me out with lightning bolts, but I'm going to lose pretty quick here anyway. All right, just making sure this is two or less. Yep, can't get it to fairy for free. All right, at six, they've already cast two lightning bolts, but I imagine their deck is full of snapcasters. They also missed a land drop last turn, so we know their hand is seven spells. And one of them is cryptic command. Right, I'll I'll wrench their mind, see what they want to do about that. They they should probably just let it resolve. I imagine they have enough extra stuff around at this point. Okay. They can also pitch a pitch Jace. Wow. They pitch Jace to Force of Negation. Remand. Uh, I'm dead in three turns to this shark. They should definitely make a 2-2 shark right now. All right, I'm not getting through this game now. That one went a lot, a lot longer than it needed to. But, uh, I think I just submit the same deck. Like Field of Ruin is like the only card that might have any, uh, or I, I guess Ashiok could have come in, but I don't want to be about that. So I am going to like curve up discard here rather than try to get in with the, the Nexus. With a mold to six, they're primed to get shredded. Like I, I can just curve straight up, uh, hit their hand, hit their hand, and then Vat Mother, uh, Force of Negation. I think I want to take that. I'm not sure if that mattered, though, because 
if they force wrench mind they also they lose this they also lose two cards i think i just gave them more choices than i took away all right that was bad i also could have led on urborg and then i could have ink moth nexus and play this turn so and ready to attack next turn so i i've made a couple errors here a lightning bolt and flagstones are gone Yeah, I definitely should have taken Remand. That was bad. Because taking Remand is the same as taking Force, because then they don't have a blue card to pitch. Okay, uh, that, that may have just saved my bacon. If they want to Remand Thoughtseize, I'm totally fine with that. Because now I just get to look at their hand again and still play the Nexus. Two Shark Typhoons and a Snapcaster Mage. All right, I'll take the Snapcaster. Play Nexus and Relic. All right, so it's looking pretty good for Vat Mother to arrive. Mystic Sanctuary, so good in the late game, so bad in the early game. I'm going with Vat Mother. Liliana is also very good, but this one can get the game done. They're on a two turn clock. Uh, like, I have a, a, a four power creature and a one power creature, and it only takes 10. And I can see a blocker in their hand. Like, I know they have the second Shark Typhoon, so it's not, like, guaranteed or anything, but this puts them under serious pressure. Let's see what they got. Uh, it's definitely up to them to figure out how to win this game or how to not lose, but they do have the tools. Teferi's pretty good. I really hope I draw a land. If I draw a land, I can pick off Teferi with Ink Moth and play Liliana. All right, that's perfect. I'm coming after Teferi. I'm activating Relic now because there's more things that affect uh, instants, planeswalkers, and creatures, or instants, enchantments, and planes and creatures in the graveyard than there are planeswalkers. Like just in case that matters, I don't think it does, but I'm not going to give them that free edge. Uh, target nothing, of course. So now they are under threat from Liliana, and I have double creature land. And they know about this Vat Mother in hand. So they're under pressure from a couple different angles right now. Their life points and their poison points are, are both in jeopardy. The old three mana cantrip. That didn't even cantrip. So I'm going to draw a card here. That was a good card to draw. All right, so I have this protection from your deck creature in play. And I'm going to put the one poison on them here. So now my proliferate plan is live. Two turns away from a zombie emblem.
I've played a lot of blue decks in my life in a lot of formats where Ink Moth Nexus is legal, and Ink Moth Nexus is terrifying. Like, just creature lands in general, so good. And Ink Moth Nexus, the poison, just crazy good. So, if they don't make a land drop, I'll be very surprised here. Because they just plus to fairy. I guess uh, they could cast Cleansing Wildfire as an instant to pick off some Ink Moths. If they play their land, Supreme Verdict is live. If they just pass, anything can happen. All right, so they did not make the land for Supreme Verdict. I'm just going to attack with these two. Because then I can jam Vat Mother. Though Teferi can just bounce jam Vat Mother. That wasn't great. I should have thought of that more before I started making my moves. Oh, they're wildfiring their own land instead of my Ink Moth Nexus. That's interesting. I guess if they think they can still like dig out of their mana screw here and, and take over the game, that makes sense. Uh, I guess I should kill Teferi since I committed to this questionable line that just plays straight into him. Yeah, I'll just pick that off. And TikTok Liliana two turns away from Zombie Emblem. I think I may have fallen backwards into the right play last turn. Like, p removing Teferi is a pretty big relief. I don't have to play around Supreme Verdict anymore. So they can make a 3-3 Shark. Oh, baby, is it time? <laughs> uh, so... One, two, three, four, five. Blight Dragon! This is bigger than a shark. Uh, gains haste, yes please. So if they make a 3-3 three, three shark, they can block Phyrexian Crusader, and Liliana can finish off the shark. So if they have Cryptic to tap my team and bounce here, that's pretty bad for me. I, I guess that's not even bad. Like, it resets the Liliana account. It right, looks like they're letting me go to combat. It's got to be Shark, right? Like, what else would they be doing in combat? All right, and they agree with me that removing my sticky creature is more important than absorbing for poison. Get that out of here. Wait, what just happened? Oh, it has Infect and First Strike. It was a 1-1 one, one when it dealt damage. That, I forgot how that works. That was awesome. <laughs> that worked out so much better than I expected. Alright, so now they're at 8 poison. I have this creature still in play, and these two, and Liliana's about to go to Zombie Town. No, she's not. <laughs> But that bolt on Liliana means that my ink moths are better at fighting now. Alright, now they're worse, but you're still dead to Crusader. And I don't think one blue man is going to fix that. Alright, 2 and 0. Oh, just farming these control decks. 
All right, we're on the draw in round three against a person with Lurus as their companion and Bosch as their avatar. So we know they are they're smart. So Lurus decks tend to be uh like it could be something combo-y like Mill or uh I guess like Storm could probably play Lurus. Uh, I don't even know if it does anything, but it's more likely that they're an ag aggressive deck of some variety. Oh god. You may cast equipment spells as though they had flash. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under Alright. Oh, it's hammer time. That's what's going on right now. There's a uh Colossus Hammer uh creature <laughs> type of deck thing. Uh Inquisition of Kozlek's gonna be really good against this deck though. Alright, magnetic theft. I'm gonna take the Steel Shaper's gift, because this hand doesn't function without it. Uh, magnetic theft is gain control of target or attach target equipment to target creature. So uh, by taking the gift, they don't have uh, an equipment or a creature to play with. Like this is basically already doing what magnetic theft is going to do or would have done or it's not going to do anything. Uh, I think that in this position, Knight's Whisper is better than Inquisition, because we know their hand isn't great. And if I can find some spot removal to back up this uh, discard, I'm going to feel a lot better. I wonder if they draw a card already. Yep, all right, yeah. Th this deck only needs like two mana to function, and but it needs cards. It needs a creature and an equipment. So if they drew a Haste Creature and a Colossus Hammer, I could have just taken 17. I'm glad that didn't happen. Oh, and Snaring Bridge. <laughs> it might be time for that card to finally do something. All right, so they, they have three lands still. They're out of redraws. All right, so I'm going to Vat Mother next turn and Scytherix the turn after that, and that should get this game over with. I'm going to pop Relic immediately, like in their end step, because I don't think their graveyard matters, and I know that cards do matter. Uh-oh. Here it comes. Yep, there's the Colossus Hammer. So they can play that as an instant and attach immediately. Yep, okay. Just checking. All right, uh, that was fu a fucked up draw. It's just torn apart by discard spells over there. I almost feel bad. This uh, hammer deck is kind of like uh, Belcher. Oh, the mirror. Oh, Luris is very good. Okay, so plus 10, plus 10, and loses flying. Okay. All right, I can discard Luris because I just keep drawing like a complete monster. Is that all four Inquisitions? <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to play Vat Mother and hope that they don't top deck a hammer. Like, it, right now, they can win the game, but I can also take over. Like, I don't think that passing without making a play is what I want to do. All right, Giver is fine. All right, I get a poison. Everyone gets poisoned. And here comes the Blight Dragon. The great thing about this is because of Giver of Runes,
because of Giver of Runes, I don't even have to consider leaving back Scytherus as a blocker. I just don't even get that play available to me. So, I mean, here it is. They can top deck a Colossus Hammer or not. That's that's going to be the whole game. Go, don't kill me. Yeah, Luris is really good in this deck. That's really nice discard insurance. They would have beat me if I didn't rip a the fourth discard spell. Yep, all four Inquisitions showed up, and I, I think I needed at least three of them. Oh, please don't kill me. All right. I'm not dead. At least not this turn. So they can block some of these creatures, but not all of them. And they have to lose their Ink Moth Nexus to not die. Uh, I should have cycled the Relic before combat. If I draw a removal spell, I can just win. Yeah, so they have to block both of the four power creatures. And then they're not going to have anything left. Uh Oh wait, no they don't. I forgot that they are at a uh, 5 poison. I thought they were at 6. I thought they messed up, but I actually just can't count. I'm not sure how they win this game now though. Um cuz they they need uh, to produce a threat and a way to juice it up. All in one turn. And we know that with it, their hand is basic planes. All right. Over the finish line with Scytherix. All right, definitely uh, Field of Ruins coming in because of Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, I think I can cut some fetch lands. For that, uh, I think I just want an extra net land, so I'm gonna cut uh, uh, um, spells now. After that, so collected brutality doesn't answer Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, do I have everything in my deck that can kill an Ink Moth Nexus? Yes, I do. Um, the graveyard doesn't matter. Ensnaring Bridge is kind of awkward. Like if I survive a poison hit or a uh, a hammer hit, Ensnaring Bridge will make sure that I just don't lose to that hammer again. But I think just having more discards going to be better. Um, all of the Lilianas are good. I don't think Dead of Winter is good. Oh, Ashiok turns off Steel Shaper's Gift. That's pretty good. All right, where am I going to find room for that now? I think Brutality might be worse than I want it to be because it's a sorcery. And it, it only takes instant or sorceries. And it doesn't kill uh, creature lands. So, or, And I guess the Relic is just still sitting around for no reason. All right, let's do this. Uh, this is a good hand. This this is an excellent hand.
Like if they do have a non Ink Moth one drop, I have Fatal Push for it. All right, Core Duelist. So I can Inquisition them, or I can just Fatal Push this thing. This is a close call. I, I'm not sure. Like, I guess pushing this, I'm going to go for Inquisition. They, their hand needs to be insane for this to backfire. So Deflecting Palm, that's pretty good. Sigarda's Aid, that's one of the combo cards. Outfitter, you may attach target equipment to target creature you control. Um, I think I just want to take Sigarda's Aid. I'll just take note of that deflecting palm so I don't get poisoned by it later. Like them having spell skite is kind of a bummer because it makes fatal push bad. But if they play spell skite, that's the artifact they could discard to wrench mind. So now I get to just mush their hand. If I had led on Urborg last turn to cast my Inquisition with, uh, that would have let me play Ink Moth this turn. I think I'm still I'm just thinking about Legacy too hard, like playing around Wasteland, but like Wasteland doesn't exist in this format. All right, just as a two-two, there it is. Uh, Inquis so we know it's not a land because they would have played it. Uh, so their life total doesn't matter. I'm going to go after the spell skite because, uh, again, like I've said a couple times in this league, um, Giving them a choice where you don't have to is almost always worse. Oh, Stoneforge. Oh, Ashiok. My darling. Maybe I should have led on that. I don't know. I'm not sure if that really matters or changes anything. Like they could have just taken their time to play around Ashiok. I do need something here, though. Okay, uh, that's actually really good. Let's get rid of that Shadow Spear. I think discarding Urborg is right. Like going minus here doesn't matter. Because they can just kill Liliana anyway, but then they still have the thing they searched for. Did I board out my Wraths? Yep, I boarded out Dead of Winter. All right, yeah, ju I just saw weird cards in game one, but it seems like this core aggro plan is much more of a thing than I expected it to be. Oh, this has to be equipped to have double strike. That's good to know. Oh god. The tur the two turns after I don't play Ashiok, they uh just go runner runner search effects. Alright, I'm just gonna play Ashiok as is. I have a blocker. Okay, this costs eight to equip. So they're gonna put Luris in hand. If they attack here, I will trade off my Ink Moth for the, the Core Duelist.
Ooh, change their mind. Prob oh, didn't change their mind. As long as it's equipped. All right. And it doesn't have first strike normally? Nope. All right. I guess they just put Luris in their hand, so having that in the graveyard isn't a huge deal. Luris, baby. Take it. All right, so Colossus Hammer still in their hand. I'm at 10, though. It's getting dicey. So I really need, like, a uh, Crusader, which has protection from their deck. I mean, Vat Mother's pretty good, too, just on stats. It's bigger than what they're doing. Uh, all right. I'm going to mill them just to see if I can uh, get some uh, attention onto Ashiok. Like, if they spend any amount of energy attacking Ashiok, that's good for me when I'm at six life. I don't think they're going to fall for it, but I want to at least hang it out there as an option. And I can see more of their deck this way, too. Uh, I am dead. Yeah, this spell skite is, is going to protect here. But I'm going to bring in my, uh, my Dead of Winter and my Damnation now that I know what they're up to. Just didn't get a good look at their full plan in game one. So Dead of Winter, Damnation, and Vat Mother are all coming in. Just thick stats. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I think Scytherix might be bad. It got in there game one, but it might not be the best. Uh, Knight's Whisper might not really have time for that. Brutality is better than I thought it was because they, they have so many things uh, that come in, so many creatures that actually want to be in play. Yeah, they showed me Stoneforge Mystic and Steel Shaper's Gift. Though Ashiok doesn't really affect the board that much. Uh, Ashiok is a three mana answer to a lot of one and two mana cards. So uh, I'm, I'll leave in one. Um, this hand needs a black source, but it is absolutely phenomenal otherwise. I'm going to keep it. I hope this works. I think this is a deck that we want to thought seize on turn one. Let's see what is important in their hand and what's less important. So Core Duelist is pretty important to this hand. They have everything else already. Uh, they can actually put Hammer on Giver this turn, or like next turn. I, I need a Fatal Push right now. Fatal Push, help me out here, dealer. Okay, that was not Fatal Push, but it was the Black Source I was looking for. So I can beat up their hand a little bit. This creature doesn't have double strike. So I can put my pro white creature into play. Like I'm going to take 11 and then put my pro pro white monster into play. Gets plus 10, plus 10, loses flying. Yep. No trample. Confirmed. Oh, they just discarded their hammer. That's cool. All right, so they're setting up for a longer game. I guess not much longer. <laughs> like, next turn, I lose now. All right, 
the hammer is in play. The whole combo is in play with protection. Oh, wow. I think we've been outmaneuvered here. What can I even do? I don't think there's any. Oh, I literally have Field of Ruin in my hand. My sideboard card. Uh, I was I was a coward. Uh, protection from Colorless. Lands are, in fact, colorless, so I better do this. That was scary. <laughs> Glad I figured it out. Uh, I'm still taking 11 from this idiot if they want to commit. So I think, all right, I was going to say they should probably put the hammer on Spellskite. Yeah, this is a tricky spot now. All right, so I have a blocker. So if they find a way to move the hammer onto Spellskite, I'm fucked. If they just uh, brick a little bit. We have a chance. Need them to brick until I find a removal spell, basically. This game has turned out pretty cool. The it, the uh, clash of the memes. Hmm. Why would you do this? So I'm going to block. Like if they can move the hammer at instant speed, I would rather lose my yeah, rather lose my crusader than lose the game. Yeah, that sucks. We needed to fade that one time. Damnation, baby. Damnation. That's the draw. That's not it. Uh, I can't even survive another turn because they can give this pro black. And just get through. Alright, I'm going to concede. The, that hammer deck had a whole lot more play to it than I expected. I thought it was like a one-trick pony, and the way we dismantled it game one was pretty decisive. But those sideboard games were really good. Uh, I, I think I gave them game two because I didn't know the deck list well enough. If I had my Wrath still in the deck, we would have... Maybe been playing a different game. But, all right. On to the next one. It's round four. We're on the draw. This hand is is pretty sketch. Like, Contagion Clasp. Maybe if we were on the play and we knew they were a Noble Hierarch deck, that would be a line we could take. Like, if they are a, a creature deck... I think this hand is fine. Like, there is a lot of removal type things going on. Like, we got a spot removal, a wrath, and Liliana. But there's no discard. There's no path to give them a poison counter. Being on the draw makes the mono three drop hand a lot worse. Yeah, I wanted to find some, some discard. This one is much better. So now the question is, who gets sent to the bottom? Uh, collective Brutality is one of those, like, it's a 10 or it's a 3 kind of cards. I think I want to send Liliana of the Last Hope into the grave or into the bottom. Because being on the mulligan and I'm going to be playing a land and a spell basically every turn, 
by the time Liliana the Veil starts doing anything. Okay, they are a combo deck. So by the time Veil starts doing anything, I think I would probably have to discard the Last Hope. Alright, so my plan here is to shred their hand into Goop before they can combo off, and then just hope they never top deck Ad Nauseam. But these disc or this discard heavy hand is going to be pretty good against them. Oh, the fetch lands turn on fatal push. I've mentioned a few times like what the role of fetch lands is in this deck, and uh, fatal push is a pretty good, pretty good one. All right, I'm going to take the angel's grace because that's half the combo, and then collective brutality is going to take the other half of the combo next turn. Oh, uh, they went all in on those Lotus Blooms. And I'm going to punish them for it. Target opponent discards an instant or sorcery. How about ad nauseum? That's a good instant or sorcery to discard. All right, they have a pact now. So now I need them to not top deck an ad nauseum ever. All right, land is fine because it's not ad nauseum. Right, they're going to make their pentad prism here. Might as well play around discard. So I think that getting Liliana in first is going to help. Like I don't need Fatal Push in the matchup. Might as well get them full Hellbent, and then I can start trying to kill them. Because if I played the Crusader first, they could actually pay for a pack next turn with the Blooms, but then they can basically never cast Ad Nauseam. All right. Yeah, so they need to... They need to draw Ad Nauseam and a I don't lose the game card. Alright, just running out Thassa's Oracle. That's allowed. I guess it doesn't tell me if they put it on the bottom or not. Up to one on top of your library and the rest on the bottom. Yeah, it doesn't tell me what they actually decided to do. That's kind of annoying. Right, let's clear that out and then get the pressure on. This is pretty funny because it ignores Phyrexian on life which is a card that they play. All right, Serum Visions will tell me what they decide to do with it. They bought them both. But, and Liliana can clip this card. So they're actually in a really tough spot because this combo requires you to have two cards at all time, and they're top decking against a Liliana of the Veil. Like, I, I don't think there's a way this deck can win with only one card in its hand, and I don't think it is very good at drawing extra cards either. All right, I'm going to play Swamp and discard Urborg. I don't want to give them black mana if I don't have to. Yeah, I am trying to figure out how they actually win this game through this Liliana. Yeah, 
They're on a three turn clock right now. Uh oh. Oh, do they have to do like a natural ad nauseum? That makes sense. And that can uh, set them up for next turn. Okay, yeah, that, that's a, a pretty nice play. It costs them their Lotus Blooms, though. Uh-oh, Spoils of the Vault and Angel's Grace. So if they go land Pented Prism right now, and then next turn, Angel's Grace, Thassa's Oracle, Spoils of the Vault, all right. I can definitely lose this game from here. And they even have Pact of Negation to play around a discard spell. So I think I have lost this game. Oh, can they do it all right now? Oh, yeah, they can just do it all right now. All right. I take it all back. That that was sweet. All right, so their deck is unsurprising. They have all the things you'd expect in it. All right, yeah, drawing that ad nauseum and not being able to pressure their life total, like doing infect damage actually mattered a lot there. Okay, fine. All right, I'm bringing in that mother as another real threat. Uh, brutality, just bring in my discard spells. I don't think Ashiok matters. Feed the Swarm mostly doesn't matter. Torpor Orb is pretty great. Uh, Thassa's Oracle is one of their win conditions. I can remove basically all of my removal. If they get to a point where they're beating down with Simeon Spirit Guide, I've probably done something right. Their graveyard doesn't matter most of the time. I don't think it matters at all. And Snaring Bridge doesn't matter either. Is there any reason to bring in any other card? Like, Feed the Swarm can destroy an unlife. So I guess that's better than Ensnaring Bridge, which does literally nothing. And Relic, at least Cantrips. Yeah, I'm just trying to get dead cards out of my deck here. It's not even that it they're good. Like Feed the Swarm and these Relics, all three of them, the one from the sideboard plus the two in the main, are all things I don't really care about. All right. So we did a great job picking their combo apart, but it took way too long to pressure. Bummer. OK, that one's better. All right, so now I have the decision to make. Like I can set up basically the same game as last time, but I'm still not pressuring them if I bottom Crusader but I'm not necessarily casting my spells if I bottom a land, and I want all the discard spells, obviously. All right, I am going to bottom Crusader. And as important as it is to pressure the combo deck, you do have to actually be alive in order to do it. And I want to make sure that's the first priority. Oh, no. Well, that's bad news. <laughs> they mulled to four to have a Ley Line of Sanctity, which is going to be really good. Let's hope their four card hand isn't a banger. Um, it had Lotus Bloom in it also. Liliana has no respect for Ley Line, though. Like, she can still make them discard, and they were still on four.
And I have a lot of easy discards to Liliana now. They played right into my hands. Or something. Uh, they topped with that Scryland. Now I'll start chewing up that hand. So I'm glad feed the swarms in my deck with this ley line, though. I like that. That gives me an insane top deck. Like if I can destroy the ley line and then wrench their mind and activate Liliana, get them hellbent. That's a big deal. I could also keep drawing targeted discard spells. Which makes sense because I do play a lot of them. So they have one card left in their hand. And I don't believe they know the top card of their deck. So if they're still holding Ad Nauseam, they could definitely just pop off the, the Natty Ad Nauseam like we saw last game right now. All right, Serum Visions is good. I, I think if they had Ad Nauseam, they would have just fired it off. Because all every point of mana matters. All right, yeah, they're, they're spinning their wheels here. Feed the Swarm. Ooh, Night's Whisper. I'll take that. Yes. So, I think putting this game into hard mode with Torpor Orb. Because now a top deck ad nauseum isn't even necessarily. GG. Like, they do have to get the, the Lightning Storm. Let's get the poison in there. Liliana can't ultimate because that is a an ability that targets. Well, she can't ultimate, just she can't target my opponent. <laughs> and I'm not motivated to mine this on myself. They do have six mana and two cards in hand, so Angel's Grace Ad Nauseam does do the thing. All right, so now they have on life, but no cards in hand. So if they top deck Ad Nauseam, they do win. We just got to make sure that doesn't happen for two more turns. Oh no, are you serious? Right off the top? Uh, Alright, now we died a lightning storm. Yeah, there's the storm. There's plenty of lands in the deck. All right, all right. Opponent is very good at drawing, specifically ad nauseum. They did it twice in two games, but what are you going to do sometimes? Played a, a non-blue deck against a combo. 
Like that last game, even through the ley line, we got them hellbent and they had to set up a multi turn permanent based win. So if they're able to thread that needle, it is what it is. But I, I do think if we run the simulation a hundred times, we win that game most of them. Because basically they had 46 cards in their deck and they were drawing to a four outer. So it was like less than 10% to win. Gigantha, the Wellspring. Uh, I mean, my hand does things, so I'm going to keep it. It doesn't have discard. I don't know what modern deck plays Gigantha. Oh no, it's Tron. Well, that's bad news, team. Like, Thoughtseize would be like, oh, all right, asking you shall receive. All right, so yeah, Thoughtseize, at least we can check their hand, see what their payoff looks like. All right, so their hand is only Ulamog. And is that full Tron? No, it's a second tower. All right, but they do have Tron. So got to get this uh, Liliana happening. Get their hand empty, I guess. Yep, so it is uh, infinite mana versus the will of the top deck. Tron is some, somewhat susceptible to... Because it has to keep hands that make Tron. It can't necessarily keep hands that make Tron and do something else. And so I thought see there's something else. Now let's see. It, they've had two draw steps to find the Karn or Worm Coil Engine or some bullshit. Right, Oblivion Stone is mostly fine. So if they want to bomb Liliana, that's not a big deal to me. Uh, that'll be, it'll get their Oblivion Stone out of here and answer, get their hand, whittled their hand down a little bit. Cascading Cataracts tells me they have Golos in their deck. There's the other tower. Destroy each non-land permanent. All right, so Ink Moth Nexus is safe from Oblivion Stone. Collective Brutality. Uh, I don't think that card is going to be helpful. Yeah, I'm going to discard Brutality. And I'm going to attack with my poison. They also don't have colored mana right now, which is a big deal. I'm not going to run either of these threats into the O-Stone, because I kind of like picking up, picking them apart with Liliana. Yeah, all right, yeah they, they realize that at some point they're going to have to answer this Liliana, and now I can jam Bat Mother. And hope it's not too late. They have Blast Zone that can answer most of my permanents eventually. Uh, they could also just cast Gigantha right now. Alright, not anymore. Shit. Alright, so can I race Karn? Like, if they cast Karn, exile my Ink Moth Nexus, I play Vat Mother. I guess they can just exile Vat Mother next turn but that then they lose Karn for it I don't know I'm gonna keep slamming that mother is the kind of threat that they might really have to respect like the, you don't really get to plus Karn and oh, alright 
they get to plus Karn. I was saying you you generally don't plus Karn and think you're okay against the Vat Mother. All right, I can't beat Worm Coil Engine. All right, shit all over by Tron, which uh, we said in the deck tech was going to happen if we played against Tron. Uh, so the Field of Ruins come in, Ashiok comes in. Uh, I, I think I like Wrench Mind here. Collective Brutality is not good, because their things that I care about are not instants and sorceries. Uh, Fatal Push has very little text. Bloodsheath Thirst can actually kill Karn if we get up to four mana. So that's something. Uh, this Ensnaring Bridge answers like Ulamog and Worm Coil Engine, but uh, Ulamog also answers Ensnaring Bridge, and Karn shreds it too. So I don't think that's actually a thing we want. I do want the the four, third Bat Mother. Relic of Progenitus doesn't do much. Oh, Dead of Winter is even worse. Relic at least replaces itself. Uh, Dead of Winter basically doesn't matter in this matchup. I don't think they have any enchantments I care about. Uh, and I've already boarded out a lot of creature removal, so I'm not going to do that. Yep. All right. I think this is the best deck we can present. Like, basically, what we have to do is shred their hand and break up Tron. This hand does not do either of those things. All right, this one does both of them. So I'm going to keep this and send Bloodsheath Thirst to the bottom. Uh, power plant, power plant, tower. Uh, I'm taking the expedition map. Yeah, so they need to find green for scrying. To assemble Tron. And I have Field of Ruin to bust it up. I'll check the art, make sure that is the right one. All right. And I led on Basic Swamp instead of Fetch Land last turn because I just bought him that Blood Chief Thirst, which is not a card I want in my hand. I don't want to shuffle it back into the deck immediately. It was kind of nice that they played out the tower because that's the one that they didn't have two of in their hand. So I think I want to get Crusader into play this turn. Like, they have to spend two mana to scrying. So basically, like, Field of Ruin this turn versus Crusader this turn, they're most likely to crack this for green, cast Sylvan scrying, get mine have two mana and pass the turn but if they find the mine in their between their draw step and chromatic star activation naturally then we're facing down a worm coil engine so or i could play liliana and start beating up their hand so i've committed to playing a spell this turn instead of activating the the field okay I'm kind of hoping that Liliana is able to pick their hand down to nothing before they know they have to play around Field of Ruin. All right, this is my plan now. Oh, they discarded Scrying. That's terrifying. They must just, like, have it. Or they drew a second Scrying. Okay, they didn't just have it. Dodge the first hurdle. Uh, 
All right, they did just have it, turns out. Or they, they must have found it off the, the draw, because that doesn't make any sense otherwise. OK, so I'm going to ruin their tower. We know they have a second power plant. We don't know anything else. This worm coil engine is going to jack me up. Even if I can make them discard, uh, they just get the, the two things. Yeah, so I took a calculated risk and got punished for it. Like cracking the uh, the sphere or the star last turn before they played the Urza's mine made it pretty clear that they were ripping. All right, and they had, they had another scrying. That's why they discarded the first one. Yeah, so their hand last turn when I uh, plus Liliano was two two scryings, Ugin power plant. So they have Ugin left over. Earth. Uh, it's nine. I'm dead in two turns. Yep. All right. Yeah, I can't get through that. Tron is just going to crush us most of the time regardless. So ended up with a 2-3, a, a which is disappointing because we started out 2-0 and then just plummeted to the ground. But um, uh, the I think the uh, ad nauseum matchup, we, we uh, positioned correctly to win it. And the opponent just had it uh, in the Tron matchup. I mean that that's just a horrendous matchup. That I mean we did what we were supposed to do. We uh, picked their hand apart with Thoughtseize. We took them off Tron. We even had a clock back backed up, ready to go, and they just powered through it. Didn't even matter. So uh, things that I would change about this deck: um, the ensnaring bridge thing just never happened. Like this, this never came up. It never mattered. I, I guess it's like humans is where it might matter. Uh, I, so or like prowess, but with Lilia, like there's so much creature removal in this deck that I think that I feel like bridge should be in the sideboard. So if we move bridge to the sideboard. We can move these field of ruin, two of the field of ruins, to the main, which helps in one of the tougher matchups. It also just adds two actual lands to the deck, so we can cut a fetch land, which I've been suspicious about all along. Um, they turn on fatal push, but they also turn on archive trap. They also turn on opponent opposing Ashiox, so uh, they reduce your life total. Uh, for almost no reason, which could matter in a deck with Thoughtseize and Castle Lockthwain in a format that contains Monastery Swift Spear. Um, Thoughtseize, Collective Brutality. Yeah, I, I like the the discard suite. I was really impressed with Blood Chief Thirst. Uh, that, that card was actually pretty great uh, at, at doing what it needed to do. Uh, I think we killed a Teferi with it and uh, sometimes a creature it could have killed Karn. All right, let me see if there's another Vat Mother. So I like Vat Mother now that the now that the Ensnaring Bridges aren't in the main deck. Uh, Vat Mother and Ensnaring Bridge was the biggest non-bow. So I'm adding a third Vat Mom in. Uh, that also uh, we have one t extra total land here. Uh, it was a 24 land deck. Now it's 25. And this is a deck that needs to hit its third land drop on time all the time. Also has some expensive stuff in uh, prolifer the proliferate effects and kicking blood chief thirst. So just another land isn't going to hurt anybody. You can discard them to Lilian if you draw too many. 
Uh, Night's Whisper is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if we want more of them or where we'd put them. Contagion Clasp just never came up, unfortunately. I, I, I can see where that card could be good, but we barely played against a creature matchup. <laughs> this would have been great in the Hammer matchup, but we never, never saw it. Uh, I, I'm not sure Relic needs to be in the main deck. Though, we didn't play against any Uro decks either, and that is the most popular deck in the format. So I'm not going to touch that, just based on my small sample size. Uh, I think the fourth Collective Brutality, or one of the Wrench Mines, could become another Feed the Swarm. I guess... What enchantments do we actually need to destroy? The Leyline of Sanctity was pretty rough. All right, never mind. I'm going to leave that alone. Torpor Orb was pretty good, though. That's a good card to have access to. Uh, I think that with the uh, Relics in the main, I don't know if we need the third one in the sideboard. Uh, now that there's three Vat Mothers in the main, I don't know that we need the third, the fourth one of those in the sideboard either. And the brutalities i don't know if we need the fourth one of those so like there's three cards here that could become other sideboard cards depending on your metagame and how your mileage your mileage may vary there i, I do wish we had another way to put poison on the opponent uh so Let's go to Scryfall. This is this is a great tool if you don't know know it. Scryfall.com. I use it for all of my magic searching. All right, so the text contains infect, and the card is black or colorless. Or all right, black. I guess it won't let me choose black and colorless. My internet is choosing to be slow. Okay, here we go. Uh, deceased vermin, what? All right. Uh, so Black Leaf Goblin, Contagious Nim, uh, Flenser Might. I, mean, I expect Plague Stinger is just the best way to put poison on our opponent that isn't in the deck yet. Uh, Hand of the Praetor is whenever you cast a creature spell with infect, target player gains a poison counter. Yeah, that's a four mana spell. That's not what we want. Icar Rats, when ETB, both players get a poison counter. So you could put poison on your opponent without ever attacking. This could be a cool card to, if we put Ensnaring Bridges back in the main deck and just become a, a like proliferate prison deck. Like that, that could be a pretty cool one. Uh, we've got this, got this. Uh, this is the, the last Lone Ranger. Yeah, really, th that's the last playable one that we're not already playing. And uh, I, I guess the, uh, the Black Control side of the deck was pretty good. Though I, I do wish the deck had more closing power. But uh, that is why I added the other Batmother. As cool as Scytherix is, it might just be better to play four Vat Mothers, but I'm going to leave Scytherix alone because he is the the king of king of poison. Okay, uh, that that's those are my thoughts on the league on the deck after playing it in one league. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you, Mitchell, for the list. It was a lot of fun to play. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.